Imagine a time when TV screens were smaller and the world of forensic medicine was just beginning to captivate our curious minds. It was in the vibrant year of 1976 that Quincy Me burst onto our screens, leaving an indelible mark on the landscape of television. Do you recall that first encounter with the sharp-witted, no-nonsense medical examiner, Quincy, brilliantly portrayed by Jack Klundman? Perhaps it was the gripping mysteries, the unflinching pursuit of justice, or the irresistible charm of his character that drew you in. For some, it was the unforgettable cadence of the show's theme music that signaled the start of another thrilling case. As the opening credits rolled, Quincy's determined face emerged from a sea of test tubes and microscopes, setting the stage for a journey into the fascinating world of forensic science. Now, as we delve deeper into the annals of this iconic series, let's uncover some surprising and lesser-known facts that will rekindle your appreciation for Quincy Me and the indomitable spirit of its titular character. So, fasten your seatbelts, dear reader, because the autopsy table is set, and the evidence is waiting to be dissected, piece by piece. Did you know that Jack Kludman initially turned down the role of Quincy, only to later accept it after some convincing from the producers? Or that the show was one of the earliest to shed light on crucial social issues, tackling topics like drunk driving and child abuse with unwavering resolve? As we journey through these intriguing tidbits, let's pay homage to a show that, like Quincy himself, fearlessly dissected the mysteries of life and death on our screens for eight riveting seasons. So, my dear reader, are you ready to embark on this cerebral adventure? Let's dive into the fascinating world of Quincy Me, where science, justice, and human nature converge in a compelling narrative that continues to resonate with us to this day. And remember, every fact you're about to uncover has been curated just for you. Quincy Me, a medical examiner's legacy, the 1976 TV series Quincy Me, brought forensic medicine to primetime television. The show's concept was adapted from the Canadian series Wojcik, but its heart was Dr. Quincy, a character based on the real-life Los Angeles County medical examiner, Dr. Thomas Noguchi. Noguchi was famous for his often controversial conclusions, conducting autopsies on stars like Marilyn Monroe, Natalie Wood, and John Belushi. In true Quincy style, he raised doubts about the official account of Robert F. Kennedy's assassination, showing that Sirhan Sirhan couldn't have fired the fatal shot. Dr. Noguchi also acted as a technical advisor on the show, ensuring its medical accuracy. Quincy Me was more than just fiction. It delved into real-life medical mysteries and ethical dilemmas. The character Quincy, played by Jack Klugman, used his expertise to uncover the truth behind deaths, often challenging the status quo. Interestingly, the show's influence extended beyond television. It was mentioned in the lyrics of the song TV Party by the punk band Black Flag. This nod reflected the show's cultural impact and its ability to resonate with a diverse audience. One lesser known fact is that the set of Quincy Me featured a fully functional gas chromatograph, a scientific instrument used for analyzing substances. This attention to detail showcased the show's commitment to authenticity, even in the smallest details. In summary, Quincy Me was not just a TV series, but a tribute to the real life work of Dr. Thomas Noguchi. It left a mark on popular culture and inspired discussions about forensic science. With its engaging storytelling and dedication to medical accuracy, the show continues to be remembered as a groundbreaking series in the world of crime dramas. In 1976, the TV series Quincy Me made its debut as part of the NBC Sunday Mystery Movie lineup. It shared the stage with other popular shows like Columbo, McLeod, and McMillan. Unlike most series, Quincy didn't follow the usual pilot episode formula. Instead, it began with four 90-minute telefilms during the 1976 to 1977 season. The show gained enough popularity to spin off into its own one-hour series, starting with a two-hour episode. This change marked the end of the mystery movie format in the spring of 1977. At the time, TV regulations prevented the series from showing autopsies on screen. Viewers had to rely on Quincy's verbal descriptions of the procedures. These restrictions have since been lifted, allowing modern police procedurals to depict on-screen autopsies. In the show's run of 148 episodes, Jack Kludman appeared in 147. There was one exception in the episode titled, Has Anybody Here Seen Quincy? Quincy's voice was heard on the phone 
but he was neither seen nor credited. The reason for this absence was Kludman's disapproval of the episode's script, which featured a body mistakenly declared dead when it was actually alive. A plot twist he found implausible for a meticulous medical examiner like Quincy. Quincy me left its mark as a unique crime series of its time, overcoming challenges imposed by regulations and evolving from its original format. It remains a notable piece of television history. In the 1976 TV series Quincy Me, several interesting details add depth to the show. One notable fact is that the hospital scenes were shot on the set of the Rampart Hospital from the series Emergency. This crossover setting gave a familiar backdrop to the medical drama of Quincy Me which followed the forensic investigations of the titular character, Quincy, played by Jack Kludman. Speaking of Jack Kludman, he had a unique connection to the world of horse racing. Kludman was part owner of a horse named Jacqueline Kludman, which surprisingly finished third in the 1980 Kentucky Derby. The horse got its name by accident, and there's even a picture of it hanging in Quincy's houseboat in some of the show's later episodes. Anita Gillette, who played a significant role in the final season of the series, added an intriguing layer to the show's narrative. She portrayed Quincy's wife, Dr. Emily Hanover, but interestingly, she had previously played Quincy's first wife, who tragically died of a brain tumor in earlier episodes. These behind-the-scenes tidbits and connections between the cast, set, and real-life events offer a fascinating glimpse into the world of Quincy Me, and add an extra layer of interest for fans of the show. In 1976, the TV series Quincy Me made its debut, leaving a lasting mark on the world of crime drama. One interesting tidbit from the show's history is related to the cast members. With the passing of Val by Sodlio on October 18, 2021, Robert Ito became the last surviving member of the original cast. Remarkably, most of the show's cast, including Robert Ito, lived into their 90s, with the exception of John S. Rajan, who reached the age of 83. This longevity among the cast members highlights their enduring impact on the series. Additionally, Quincy Me found itself unexpectedly mentioned in a comedy routine by Eddie Murphy on his 1983 comedy album Comedian. Murphy referenced the show's title in a bit about a drinking father, adding a touch of humor to the series' legacy. Another noteworthy aspect of the show's history involves Mark Scott Taylor, who initially served as a technical advisor. His expertise in operating complex instruments like electron microscopes proved invaluable to the production. To save on costs and ensure authenticity, Taylor was given a recurring bit part. Over time, his role expanded significantly, culminating in an episode where he helped Dr. Quincy save a life. Taylor even contributed scripts to the show and eventually rose to the position of co-producer by the seventh season. Quincy Me remains a beloved series with intriguing behind-the-scenes stories, enduring cast members, and even unexpected connections to popular culture. As we reach the closing moments of our journey through the captivating world of the 1976 TV series, Quincy Me, I invite you to take a moment for introspection. This iconic show, with its enigmatic medical examiner and relentless pursuit of truth, has woven itself into the fabric of our memories and cultural heritage. Quincy, brilliantly portrayed by Jack Kludman, didn't just dissect cadavers, he dissected society, exposing its flaws and injustices. With each episode, we were drawn into his world, compelled to question the status quo and contemplate the intricacies of life and death. The show's unique blend of forensic drama and social commentary left an indelible mark on television history. Now, it's your turn to reflect. How did Quincy Me touch your life? Did you find yourself on the edge of your seat, dissecting mysteries alongside our fearless protagonist? Or perhaps you were inspired by the show's commitment to justice and morality. Whatever your connection, we'd love to hear your thoughts and cherished memories. Share your favorite moments, your most unforgettable episodes, or simply your thoughts on the impact Quincy Me had on you. Your personal stories and reflections add depth to the rich tapestry of this remarkable series, making it an enduring part of our shared cultural experience. Thank you for joining us on this nostalgic journey back to the world of Quincy Me. Your time and interest are greatly appreciated. Keep the conversation alive and share your thoughts. Together, we'll continue to celebrate this timeless classic. With appreciation, 